Okay. Praise the Lord. God bless you guys. Amen. Well, Happy New Year's. And I, I pray that, that you you had a safe New Year. We're, we're back on live stream. Uh, our Bible studies, Praise Chapel, Baldwin Park. And we're blessed that you've come to join us once again. Those that are following us on live stream, uh, we're just honored that you make the time. Uh, many folks can't go to church right now, but those that are watching live stream, I pray a double blessing in your life. Hallelujah. You know, there's just a whole lot going on. And, and, and as a people of God, you know, uh, we've got to pray. We, we really got to pray. You know, uh, I was thinking of the scripture. I was just, my mind was just kind of rambling through my mind. And I was thinking of John 14, verse 1, where it says that, Let not your hearts be troubled, because there's a whole lot of panic going on in our world today. There's a whole lot of troubled people. They're, they're confused. They're, they're anxiety. They're stressed. They're, they're uh, ambitious. There's a whole lot of going on. But it seems like nothing's going on. And uh, we need to pray. Hallelujah. There, there's a whole lot of sorrow going on. There's a whole lot. We need to pray for our government, uh, our world, our presidency. You know what's going on. The, the changes there and, and just around the world, America and, and, and our local church. You know, we, we've had some uh, we've had some major trials and, and, and brothers and sisters that were once serving God are, are no longer with us. And uh, I want to I want to re re remember some of those families and, and bring them to your attention. Maybe you don't know, but in our congregation and and those that are close to us. Uh, first of all, I'd like to lift up uh, the, the family of of Johnny Doris, uh, the vice president of Praise Chapel. He passed on and went to be with the Lord. I want to pray for their congregation. Uh, I want to pray for uh, amen that, that God would just move upon their lives and, and, and within our church, you know, I, I want to lift up Sister Cynthia Areola. Uh, her husband just passed. Uh, continue to pray for the Zubia family. Um, they've had a few losses in their family. And uh, I want to also pray for Brother Andy. Uh, he lost his wife uh, through this COVID and, and a whole lot. Uh, Sister uh, Ruthie Ward. I want to pray for her, uh, her daughter Becky, and her family, and, and all of them, and, and uh, hallelujah. I want to pray for uh, Pastor Angel. He had lost his cousin this week also, and um, who else? Uh, Bob Bohorkas, he, he's no longer with us, so we want to pray for the Bohorkas family. Uh, he, he, and and uh, man, there's so many. Um, let's see, uh, uh, let's also pray for those that are that are still in quarantine. Uh, I mean, folks that are still in the hospital. I want to lift up Brother Louie. Amen. And uh, those, uh, Ernie, Gar uh, uh, Ernie uh, Ramirez, continue to pray for him for a complete healing. And uh, he's, he's, he's taking oxygen. Uh, uh, Sister uh, uh, Jacqueline, amen, in our church also. And also uh, sit, continue to pray for Donna. There's, there's so many, man, it just, uh, just kind of brings us down. But like I said in the beginning, let not your heart be troubled. The Bible says, you believe in God, believe also me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And you know, uh, we got to trust God. So we want to just go before the Lord because there's a whole lot of people just hit finances financially and, and just brought down and spiritually. They're just kind of weak in the Lord. But we're going to go before the Lord tonight. And just, I just wanted to lift up those folks and, and, and even the loss of those that during the, this riot that took place the other day, uh, uh, lives were, were shed, blood was shed and, and in the White House and just other things all around it. Every day there's something going on, but we're going to go before the Lord and, and pray. Father, in Jesus name, we lift up all of those that are going through time of loss, sorrow, heartache, God. And Father God, going through the, the loss of a loved one and the struggles of life, Father. We just pray, God, as we trust in you, God, that you give strength to the brothers and sisters, the families, uh, the relatives, those. Uh, Father God, we pray for the first responders. We thank you for the doctors and all of those that, Father, just are, are going out of their way, the extra 
mile, Father. And we just thank you, Father God, for, for just urgent care and all the things that are happening in life, God. We just know, God, that you are the great physician. You can do a miracle. And we just ask, God, your kingdom come. Your will be done, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for peace, safety, and the blood of Jesus over each and every one of us and our families that we be safe in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. Like I said, thank you for joining us once again for our Friday night Bible studies. Amen. We're, we're, we're blessed. I, I thank God for my pastors and continue to pray for him. He's had a few losses in his own family also this year. It's been a rough year for everyone, but we just went over that hump into the 2021 now, and we're just going to go forward for God. Hallelujah. And that, that's what it's all about. But hallelujah. Amen. Just to give you a few announcements, our church, we have prayer meeting. Amen. We just finished a, a, a fast this week. And I know maybe you joined in the fast or other churches, other believers, because we're believing that this year is going to be a year of change. This year is going to be a year of breakthroughs. We're going to believe that God's going to just have his hand upon this world. And this, this virus is going to seize. It's going to stop. And we're just going to believe God and stand on the promises of the Lord. Hallelujah. But hallelujah, there's prayer meeting, like I said, at 8 o'clock in the morning at our church. Amen. If you'd like to join us, then later on this, this month, uh, the, 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 the women are having a, a, a women's discipleship. It will be live streamed. Uh, the men will have a men's discipleship. And, and, and uh, we're having prayer meeting church. And we're just believing God for a, a, a move of the Holy Spirit in our service this coming Sunday and join us live also and uh, amen continue to be faithful you were faithful last year continue to be faithful God will honor your faithfulness this is part of our our Christian lifestyle is not just being faithful in attendance or reading the word but in your giving God loves uh, amen us when we give unto him he gives back you know, it's the promises of God, and this is what we do, and, and there's no lack in the kingdom of God. Thank God that He owns all the cattle on a thousand hills, and all the silver, and all the gold. He's the one that gives, and hallelujah, He will provide. He's a providing God, and we just thank God for all that. Hallelujah. I just want to get into the Word. We're, we're going to be starting off this new year. Hallelujah. Our theme for our church is a change is going to come. And that's what we're believing for, that there's going to be a change this year like never before. Hallelujah. So if you have your Bibles, I want to open up the Word of God tonight in the book of Ecclesiastes. A powerful uh, prophet here, or actually the man of God, was Solomon that spoke these words uh, uh, and just brought revelation. He, he, uh, a wise word to the people that lived of the day and it, it just goes on and on this is a this is a good word for us in the book of Ecclesiastes and in chapter 3 reading from verse 1 it reads like this to everything everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven there's a season and there's a time Sometimes it's not your time, it's not quite time yet, but your time will come. There's a season, maybe you go through a drought, maybe you're, you feel like you're in a storm, you're, you're going through a dry spell, but you know what, there's a time and a season where God will replenish and prosper and bless, but you know, sometimes we might be even going through a valley, a valley of the shadow of death. Verse two reads like this, there's a time to be born and there's also a time to die. There's a time to plant, and there's also a time to pluck up that which, which is planted. You know, this is the word of the Lord. This is like life goes on. It doesn't matter as, as time goes, as the clock ticks, and the years go by, and we just go and go and go. This is part of life. This is all about what we are and who we are. There's seasons that we go through. I want to talk to you about different seasons. This is the title of the message. A change is going to come. I said a change is going to How many want to change? Hallelujah. 
I'm not talking about pocket change, but I'm talking about a change for the better, for the good. Amen. We want change. But this is a season sometimes we're going through in life. It, 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 we, we've got to see, it's like on, on the news daily, we want to see the forecast. We want to know what the weather is going to be like. Well, uh, how we, where are we going to go? Where we're going to dress? How uh, do we have to wear a coat? We need a rain uh, umbrella. Do uh, do we need to uh, just teat these types of things? Bring extra water because it's going to be hot where you're going. Uh, but in life, there are changes. There are seasons all around that happen every other month. You know, we see that there's winter, there's spring, there's fall. And, and, and you know, then there's summertime. It's just a, a time uh, of change. But there's a season for everything, like I said. And the seasons are constructed by God. He, he made the world like this. As the, as the world is turning, we, we see the sun and the, and the moon. And every day it comes out and it seems like it comes around. But, but there's changes in our, in our society, in our lives. See, we can see this through the, the beginning of time. Like God created the world, the four seasons, like I just mentioned. The earth moves, and, and, and but one thing I want to bring to your attention is that even though there's seasons of change, God never changes. And that's the good thing. If you put your trust, like Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understandings, but in all of your ways. Acknowledge Him. He'll, he will direct your path. This is the promise and this is the will of God. How many want the will of God in your life? Amen. He will give you His perfect will. It's not your will, but you got to trust in Him. Trust Him that He's going to bring you through every circumstance. Hallelujah. Like I said, the Bible teaches us all of these types of things that are going to happen even in our future. The Bible teaches us in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8 that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He don't change. He is the same. He is a healer. He is the restorer. He's our savior. He is the bread when we're hungry. He is the good, good father in heaven. Hallelujah. And when our lives go through change, and how many of us, like I said, been through change? Some of you have got the COVID and you've got sick and you had to go to the hospital. You had, had just gone through some changes in your life. It, it affected your home, your, your job, it, it just all around you. It, it, it's just like you're not the same. But let me tell you something. You've gone through some changes. You might have to eat, eat different. You might have to live different. But let me tell you something. God has not changed. You might have changed how some people are moving to different areas. They're, they're trying to get away or trying to, 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 to do something to make life work for the good for their lives. But yet God has not changed. Hallelujah. As we go through our lives, our lives are going to change. It's, it's, just, it's, just, it's just practical. When you were a child, you lived like a child. You played like a child. Everything you did was childish ways. And as you grow older, there's change of maturity in our lives. And as we grow in the kingdom of God as a, as a new convert, and then we become a disciple, and then we become a, a true disciple, is that we become a follower of Jesus. Like Jesus said, if you choose to follow me, take up your cross daily and follow me. This is what God requires of us, to follow him. And through the changes, Jesus went through many, many changes. He had changes when he, he, he was handpicking his disciples one by one. He says, Peter, lay down your nets and follow me. He sees other brethren in different cities and he says, come follow me. And they left their profession. They left their families and they followed the Messiah. They followed Jesus and they had change in their lives. And I know when I came to the Lord, there was a change that took place in my life. 
and I've never been the same. I've been through the, the years will continue to add on in life. We grow older in maturity and life. But the thing is, is that you can grow in the Lord at the same pace. We can grow and mature in the kingdom of God and, and be, be wise in Christ and no longer live to the ways of the world, no longer adapt to the ways of the world. But let me tell you something. Now we are adapting to the ways of the kingdom of God. We want God's evidence in our lives. This is a season as of right now. This is what God is doing and he's calling the church. Amen. Not to abandon the church, but hallelujah. He wants us to come to that first love again. Come back into that love relationship with the Lord. Let that change, let that, 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 that spiritual romance once again, come into your life where you love reading the Bible. Remember when you were a new convert, when you first started going to church, man, it was like, man, you wanted to read a chapter a day in two chapters. You wanted to memorize scripture. You wanted to get into the word of God. Whatever you can do, you, you, you would listen to the gospel preached. You would listen to worship and praise. You wanted to stay with Christian people. You wanted to be at church when the doors were open. That love, that's the change. We need to get it back. We need to get back in that love with Christ. Amen. Can you believe that, that there's a whole lot of folks that have lost that first love? It's just like some, some relationships. They lose that love for their spouse and no longer even want to be around the one. You know, we hearing things on the, on the television where there's, there, I mean, there's the divorce courts are, are just, the, the people are, are just going and doing what they have to do, what they feel is right. And they choose another one and then another one and they're breaking up. But instead of staying loyal to that one, we need to stay loyal to God. We need to keep that love relationship with God. And the way you do that is through prayer. You talk to God, you love God, you serve God, you repent, you rejoice in the Lord always. Because this is a season that God is going to bring us into. So whatever season you're in right now, God, let me tell you, won't abandon you. You might feel like, oh, the pastor doesn't understand me. The church, uh, they rejected me. Oh, my, my family doesn't want anything to do with me. Well, God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. No matter how hard life gets, no matter what you're going through, you've got to believe that God is going to turn it around. And this is where the change begins. When you accept the Lord and say, God, no matter what happens, I'm going to serve you. This is where the change begins. God doesn't measure seasons by clocks and calendars. He measures, amen, seasons by how we respond to the gospel as it's preached unto us. Because God says, as by title, there's going to be a change. There's going to be a change in you. The church don't change. It's still at the same address. It's in the same city. It's right there. But the thing is, have you changed and no longer walk through those doors like you once did? You no longer are in the worship and praise as you once were. See, there's something missing and God hasn't moved. My pastor had shared a story one time about about this this guy driving with his girlfriend or wife in the yeah his wife in the car and so in the they're driving down the street you know in the beginning of the years they're driving and she's looking out the window on the passenger side and just kind of looking at the trees go by and just the countryside and and he's just driving along and and then the wife says to the husband and says uh Remember when we used to sit so close together? Remember when you'd put your arm around me and we would be so close together? What happened? And the, and the husband looks at the wife and says, well, I haven't moved. And he's still driving. <laughs> the thing is, is that sometimes there's change and we lose that passion that we had for God at one time. And I believe that there is going to be a change. Change comes if you're ready or not. We got to be ready 
in season and out of season. This is what God has required the church. Be ready in season and out of season. Because sometimes it might not be your season, but God is saying, be ready. Be ready. Be watchful. Watch and pray that you don't fall into temptation. So how can we plan to a neg negative change? Because sometimes there's changes and it seems very negative. We've got to have courage. You got to have courage not when there's negativity that comes your way, when correction comes your way, when discipline comes your way, we can't lose focus. We can't lose the peacemaker, which is God. Amen. So that we can have a testimony. No matter what, what happens in life, we still glorify God. No matter what, your bank account is in the red. Man, your car is out of gas. Man, the job says we're closed. Let me get to tell you something. The doctors might have said, there's no room for you, for your loved one to come in. But let me tell you something. God is right there. We've got to trust God all the way. We will experience sickness. We will experience in our lifetimes change. But let me tell you something. Accidents happen. I understand. And let me tell you something. It goes on. And, and, and sometimes those changes will change us forever. People, they got sick. They've been in car accidents and, and never the same anymore. But I can remember going, amen, maybe you've gone too, to an Alcoholics Anonymous session. I remember going before I was a Christian. I had gone to these sessions and I remember them saying a prayer. I wasn't saved, but I remember them saying a prayer to the higher power. And the, they, they said this prayer it was called the serenity prayer. So I thought it would be good to share it because if the world is saying this prayer, let me tell you something, as Christians, give ear to it. Let me, let me just quote it to you. Amen. It says this, God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change. He's just saying, I got to accept things I can't change. I cannot change. Then it goes on to say, courage to change the things I can. This is their prayer all the time. I need courage to change the things that I can and wisdom to know the difference. After we accept that change, it is simply part of our lives. What can we do? And see, this is the prayer that they would pray all the time. They would all the time pray, I need to learn to accept things I cannot change. And I need to, the wisdom to change things that I can change. See, seasons of change will come. But like I said, God never changes. In seasons of change, we need to trust God. Where will you find, where will you find yourself if it wasn't for God? Where will you find yourself? Dismayed, unloyal, unfaithful, broken, lost. <clears throat> Let me tell you something. If you find your place in God, if you take that step forward and say, you know what? I'm going forward. Amen. I know we live in life sometimes. It seems like there's seasons of, of, like I said, trial and heartache. And it seems like they last forever sometimes. Sometimes like when, when you're broken and you feel like <clears throat> giving up, let me tell you something. That's the time where God wants to bless your life. This is, this is what's happening in our world today. There's difficult times. But you know what? God has defined our future. This is where we cannot lose focus. We've got to stay humble before the presence of God. We can't just jump up and make a decision because many times in a dark season of our lives, in a cold season of our lives, we can, we, we've got to talk to God because our future is in His hands. Or we can move 
out of the will of his hands. See, God has come to rescue us. Amen. In our times of difficulty. Let me tell you a scripture in Jeremiah 29 and in verse 11. It, Jeremiah 29 verse 11 reads like this. For I know the plans and the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future, an expected end. Then you shall call upon me, you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken, I will listen unto you, and then you shall seek me and find me. When you shall search for me with all your heart, there's the key, search for the Lord with all your heart. It's like you lost your keys. You're searching everywhere. You're turning over pillows and looking in your pants and looking in drawers, looking in the driveway. You're looking all over the house for your key. We got to seek the Lord like that. Where can you find God in the midst of trouble? Hope and a future God has for our lives as we seek him. We can, in the world, it could be collapsing. There can be murmuring, complaining, anger, and bitterness. There can be jealousy and revenge. But let me tell you, all around in the midst of that, we've got to have hope in God. This is where the change begins. You've got to make the change. You can set the pace and the atmosphere for your family, your life, and your future, even in your church. See, this is what God wants to do. We cannot let difficulties dictate our lives. We cannot let the circumstances around us come in our spirit because it will bring us down when we are bold and we are courageous. See, we can let the tough times come and they will come and they can even break your heart at times. And let me tell you something, God is right there strengthening you the whole time. It may seem like, wow, man, where is God in the midst? Where is God in this situation? Let me tell you something. I went through some hard, hard last month. I went through a heavy scene here in my house. But you know what? God seen me through. I felt abandoned. Where are you, God? Help me, Lord. I need you right now like never before. And he came and just brought a peace upon my situation. So whatever you're ex experiencing, it, you, let me tell you something. Your season is just a chapter in your life. That chapter is going to end and you're going to start a new chapter and a new season in your life. Amen. We can't let the chapter, M amen, be your entire book. There's a whole lot of people get locked PTSD, they get locked in their circumstance and they can't break free because of trauma and disorder and because conflict and because of murder and all of the things of evilness in our world. People get locked into that and they can't get freed. But let me tell you something, there's going to be a change. God is going to bring and God is going to come and bring a change. Often we are desperate to move in a situation because of a season that has quickly possibly come into your life. It's a human, our human nature. We don't want to struggle. We don't want to suffer. We went the easy way. But sometimes we desire this move and we impulsively move and we make a wrong choice, a decision that lasts for years and it has consequences. We don't want to walk in our nature, our carnal nature. We need to walk in the spirit, be sensitive. God, direct me. God, what should I do? God, what's going to happen here? I'm going to trust. This is what we need to do. Hey, we cannot be calling up our cousins and our uncle and our auntie. We can't be calling up all kinds, trying to get some input. Let me tell you something. Listen to the voice of God. This is where prayer is so important as a church, as a people. We need to resist the urge 
to make a permanent decision, amen, based on a temporary circumstance because a whole lot of people miss God. A whole lot of people have broken up a relationship and a home. They've left their job. They've moved out of the state. They left a church when they felt like this is the, what I need to do. Really? Who told you? <clears throat> Let me tell you something. If you can't take heart to what God is speaking to you tonight, you're going to miss the Lord. The Bible says not everybody that says, Lord, Lord's going to enter the kingdom of heaven. At one time, these people's names was written in the book of life. At one time, these people were on fire for God. They were prayer war, intercessory. They would seek the Lord. They were quoting scriptures, worshiping, singing praise to God. But now there's nothing but foul language coming out of their lives. They're drinking and partying and going to the clubs and, and going and living a life instead of just serving God that, that has a, a mixture of compromise. And there's no peace. There's no justice for that. That's poor exampleship in the kingdom of God where the Lord says, follow me as I follow Christ. Paul said that, follow me as I follow Christ. He was a good example. If you take heart to what I'm saying, your struggle is temporary. The heart, we've got to just wait, weather the storm, wait it out. Don't, don't make an urgent move sometimes. Because a whole lot of people will bail ship. They'll jump out. <laughs> Amen. You can, you can, when hope in the future uh, is, is in God's hands, it's right there. You can be at peace during panic. Those that might have seen the movie, The Titanic, if you remember all the chaos that was going on when that iceberg hit the Titanic and, and, and it just the people were panicking and running, there were some folks, like I, I, I was just, just amazed watching those musicians they're out there just playing away playing away and just just uh, at peace and just uh, uh, just in the midst of of all the turmoil but that's what the peace where God comes into our lives the same situation everybody's going in chaos Oh, man, we need to get revenge. We got to get back and we need to do this. And I'm going to shout out and I'm going to blow them up. And I'm, you, people want to do all this craziness instead of wait on God. Just zip it, close it up. Just let it go. Let it go. Let that, that just flow down the river. Don't even try catching it. Because let me tell you something. You're going to lose in the end. There are seasons that we walk by faith and not by sight. Change wasn't going to just come. But what a change does, let me tell you something. If you're walking with God, change is going to bring blessings. Did you hear me? I said change will bring blessings. Amen. There's, there's blessings with your name on it. But when you get out of the will of God, those blessings are no longer yours. They have your name on it, ready to be delivered. It's like, like Amazon, these, these prime guys are just coming up and down. As you bring them packages, and, and God's saying, send them their blessing. But yet they walked out, they, they, they moved. They no longer at their address, spiritual address. They're not in church any longer. They're no longer, uh, they, it's been weeks, turned into months, not even read the scriptures any longer. They're, they're out of the will of God. So, the, whoa, the Holy Spirit, the angel of God, that prime came down from heaven and just drove by and just went right back up and said, hey, we need to put it back on the shelf because they weren't there. They, they, they missed Sometimes people miss the blessings of God this way. God is not just going to come and bring a blessing on you because you asked for it. I mean, people do pray about it. There's seasons of change, but we need to cling to the unchanging favor of God, the blessings of God, God's love, because it never, ever changes. He loves us with no doubt Amen. No matter where we've come from or what we have done, God still loves us. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 3 reads like this. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with loving kindness. I will build you up again 
and rebuild you. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 8 says this, The grass withers and the, and the flowers fall, but the word of God stands forever. See, God is watching out for us. It's a beautiful picture where in the scripture it says that, that in the midst of change, the green grass is going to wither because the dry heat, the summer, the, 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 unless it's going to be water and taken care of, like the flowers, you know, they're, they're beautiful when you take time and work and plant and maintain them. But this is where the joy of the Lord is in our lives. When we look at the unchanging hand of God, God's hand and His move, His Spirit will continue to move in our lives. He's unchanging. When you need something, amen, during a difficult time, amen, sometimes it's hard. But the only thing you can hold on to is the Word of God, which is the promises of God. I am a God that says, yes, and a, a, I am. Yes, and amen. I am the great king. I am the provider. I am the great physician. I am the restorer. I am the healer. And this is the kind of God we love. We love God's word. We love what he has taught us. And we know that through the preaching of the cross, we can endure. Hebrews 13 and verse 8 tells us, that Jesus Christ, again, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. This is the promise that we have, and we have to hold on with all of our, our strength, that Jesus is the same, even though we change mentally, and sometimes even just out of life, when seasons change, we have a choice. What are we going to do? We have a choice to accept life to the fullness or we can just move as the grace moves us and God's spirit will lead us. A lot of times we, we, we've got to adapt to the situation, our future, our life. We can go deeper with God or you can go shallow with God. Amen. He will lead us to a better place. But if we lead ourselves, we'll, we'll lead ourselves astray. We can go farther with him as we hold on to his hand or we can release and let go of his hand. See, the choice is up to us. And this is what brings change through our lives. You know, there's nothing worse than hanging on to something that, you know what, God says, let it go. A whole lot of times it seems like, my God, you, you, I'm believing for a change. Sometimes we just got to let it go and see what God does. God will move on your behalf. It's a promise of God. Like my opening scripture in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, it tells us that there's different seasons. There's different times in our lives. To everything there is a season. And to every purpose under heaven. See, change will come and it's as a result of choosing. As we welcome change, I mean, here we are, 2021. We never thought we would be in this predicament where we're at, where I'm having Bible study and nobody's here except my family, my intermediate family. That's it. Nobody else. But you know what? Before, we, we would have sometimes up to 15 people. We would have friends, neighbors. We would have uh, uh, brothers and sisters in the Lord that would come and, and we'd have fellowship and just have a good time, but it's not happening any longer. And uh, well, we just got to adapt to this little change. Was, you know, we're going to believe God for a better change in our future. It's just adjustments. And sometimes adjustments are hard. A whole lot of Bible studies now had a Go live stream with cell phones and video and lights and churches and, and Zoom and, and Facebook and all these things. Thank God for technology. But the thing is that we're adapting to the new change. And the thing is that we're going to believe God, that God is going to move even in the as we once did before, but even better and more. Hallelujah. That's God is doing something good in our lives. And through all that, we need to be good stewards. This is a quality of a Christian.
A good steward, we know what a steward means. It means a manager, somebody that manages an apartment, manages a job, manages and, and oversees and, and, and sees the needs and how to better things in life. We are managing ourselves. Be a good steward in your walk with God. See, through this, while we, we've been through changes, we've been stewarding ourselves. We're act, acting out how we should live. Should we go? Should we be there? Should we invest? Should, and there's a whole lot of things that are co coming our way. But the thing is, how would the Lord want us to go? How, what would the Lord want you to do? This is where the change comes inside of us. Lord, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding, advancing, growing, stepping forward. This is what God requires as a people. We may never fully understand all the changes around us. But you know what? God does not change. And God wants us to read our word. God wants us to pray. God wants us. I mean, don't lose those things. Sometimes it's just like in a job or even in church. Go back to the basics. In music, go back to your basics. In, in, in sports, go back to the basics. And you know what? You will always stand when you go back to the basics because there's a foundation that we build on in our walk with God. This is good stewardship. And as you do this, it's not the fantastic. It's not the big scenes. It's the little ones. All those little things add up. This is what gives us time and resources as we are faithful stewards. Amen. In unwanted or unexperienced, unexpected experiences just of life, we stay with the basics. Serve the Lord with all your heart. The Ten Commandments, we've got to follow the teachings and the doctrines of Christ and not lose that. It's vital for our salvation. God allows change in our lives, like I said. And the only way we can appreciate, appreciate good, the good and the experiences in the difficult times is what is, is the only thing, like I said, is keeping in tune with God. Don't, don't lose that opportunity. For some, amen, change is great news. Sometimes it, 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 it's, a, it's during an unpleasant time, unsettling time, but even through that good times, there's also anxieties. There's sometimes a fear. We don't know. We don't know the outcome. A whole lot of people were, were trying to make it up to the snow. We had a storm last week. A whole lot of people were making it up to the storm, but yet people, they got snowed in. They had no change. They, none expected to what was going to happen in that change. But a change is going to come in the believer. Whether we want it or not, it's here. The change is here. Amen. But we can't let fear grip our heart like the world is. There's a whole lot of people living in fear. There's a whole lot of people that, that feel that even, like I said, in our world around us, we can't follow what they're doing. We got to stand on the promises of God. Amen. Through this time of change, though, like I said, there's good, but there's also bad. Hey, thank God for, for those that got a stimulus check. Oh, thank God for those that are, are, are still working. Oh, thank God for those that are just uh, blessed abundantly. But you know, there's others that are got the short end of the stick. They didn't get no financial blessing. They didn't get a, a, a good report from the doctor. They didn't get a, a what they wanted to hear from their family member. And you know what? Let me tell you something. In the midst of those changes all around us, good or bad, in the face of these changes, you're not alone. You're not alone because somebody is praying for you. Amen. Somebody is interceding for you. And you know, the greatest person that is praying for you above all, the Bible says Jesus Christ is the only mediator between heaven and earth. 
between God and man. It's Jesus. He's interceding for you and I. He's praying for you. And all the arena is full. All of the angelic beings, all the heavenly hosts, all of those that are witnesses are praying and cheering us on, saying, go, serve the Lord, be faithful, do, do what's right. And you know what? God understands the season we're in. Hallelujah. There are many struggling, like I said, have lost loved ones. They have passed. They fought the good fight. They, they, there's still some today that are fighting a disease that are in, in, uh, in the hospitals, in the ICU, the emergency rooms. They're, they're packed. They're, they're, there's people struggling. They're, as I'm speaking right now, there's people breathing their last breath. You know, not, and, and the thing is, is that, you know, it, it, I, I keep saying this, there's a whole lot of folks that are leaving before their time. But, you know, <clears throat> it's a time where God has called them. They don't want, God didn't want them to suffer. I really believe that. But even though we can welcome, hallelujah, life, because through, through all that's going on, there's babies being born. There's families being reunited. There's still marriages. There's still a lot of good things going on in our lives, in our world today. For everything, there is a season. There is a time for every matter under heaven. Life follows the pattern. Life, it follows the pattern sometimes with Little effort or a whole lot of effort, but there is a pattern that we're all going down this course and we're all going down it together. But what you do and how you live makes the difference because there's a whole lot of folks that are barely hanging on. You can be that extended arm to reach out and lift them up. The Bible says two are greater than one. There are currents like in a river or in, in the ocean, undercurrent, sometimes it's, it's pulling on us. But you know, we just got to believe God that God is going to see us through. For those of us in church, we're, we're seeking God. We're seeking the Lord for, for, for a, a, a move like never before. Amen. For God's presence, God's anointing, guidance of the Holy Spirit upon the leadership and every pastor and those that are preaching the gospel, every believer, every leader, every deacon, everyone that's in ministry, that they would not lose sight, hallelujah, and stay in the race, hallelujah, that God will resolve these problems and issues as we feel sometimes, and it's normal to feel disappointed. But let me tell you something. There's a whole lot of folks that sometimes want God to come flying in like Superman. They want God to come in like faster than a speeding bullet and, and, and a locomotive and, and fix things. But let me tell you something. God is not no superhero. He's not your Wonder Woman. He's not going to come in and bust in and, and just because you asked. But there are some times in life that people wonder, where is God? In the midst of all this. Well, the word of God teaches us in the book of Psalms 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and God is our strength. God is a present help in a time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. This is the promise of God. Though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. And it seems like chaos everywhere. But the thing is, like the Word of God, everything comes back to the Word. That's why we need to read the Word. We need to read the book of Psalms. If you haven't read the Bible all week, there's something wrong with you, not the Bible. There's something wrong with you, not the church. There's something wrong with you, not the pastor. See, the thing is, is that you have not been in the Word. This is manna from heaven. This is the Word of God. The Bible says that, that heaven and earth is going to pass away. It's going to pass away, but the word of God will not. It's solid. It's a proof. Don't get angry with God because you're 
prayers are not answered. So a whole lot of people in our world today are angry because, amen, we don't have Trump as president coming up because he didn't answer their prayers. Well, let me tell you something. God is still on the throne. Let me tell you a story about a man that prayed. There's a story about a man who lived by a river who heard on the radio report that there was a flood coming and that everyone must evacuate. He said, not me, said the man. God loves me. God will save me. Then the flood waters came. The flood waters uh, are coming. And, and, and as the rescuers arrived on a rowboat, he, they said, hey, hop on board. We're here to save you, to rescue you. He says, I'm fine, replies the man. I'm fine. I'm, I'm religious. God will save me. And finally, a helicopter comes and he arrives and, and throws down a rope uh, to rescue him. And, and on the man uh, that's on top of his house now, and the, there's a river that's flooding and and he says, no, I don't, I don't need, I don't need it. He says, I'm fine. God will take care of me. God loves me. And the man, the man ends up drowning. At the gates of St. Peter's, the man demands an audience with God and says, why did this happen? I'm religious, man. I pray to you. I'm faithful. Why did you let me drown? And God replies, I sent you a radio report, I sent you a rowboat, and I sent you a helicopter. What are you doing here? <laughs> See, he thought that God didn't answer his prayers. But sometimes we, we don't see God in the midst of your prayers. For everything, there is a season. No matter what is happening around us. There can be change. There is going to be a change. Amen. Do not be afraid. Change is all around us. Like I said, personally, in our church, in the world, there are transitions of change all around us. But the scriptures keep telling us, don't be afraid during change. God is your refuge during change. God is your strength during change. God is a very present help during change. Therefore, we will not fear. Don't be afraid. Though the earth is going to be removed, and it seems like there's a panic, pandemic all around us. It says that the scripture says, even though the mountains be shaken, and it seems like they're thrown into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and the foam, the mountains tremble. Amen. Change is happening. And it's all around us. As you look outside in the world today, things are different, aren't they? They really are. They're, they're, there's a whole lot of things happening around us. But we've got to look at the positive. We've got to look and trust in God. When you're stepping into this new season, because it is a new season, it's a new year. Amen. We need to, amen, call on God like never before. Amen. The church needs to step it up. Amen. Because this is the, this is a step for, forward to power. This is a step forward to God's power. To see that the world knows that the God that we serve has all the power. Amen. In heaven and earth, where God's power can tear down strongholds, break any chain of bondage. Amen. And set every captive free. Hallelujah. That's the kind of God we serve. Amen. This is the prayer that we need to pray. And we need to believe God that those that were once held captive, those that were under siege, amen, that they're going to come out. Hallelujah. We're going to believe for those that have been forgotten that they will be remembered. We're going to pray for those that have been depressed that they will begin to be rejoicing. And those that have been rejected will be accepted. 
We're going to believe God that those that didn't have joy, that it's going to manifest in their lives. Those that were once poor, hallelujah, the Bible tells us when I'm poor, you're rich, that they're rich. Those that are afflicted, those that have sickness will be made whole. This is what we're going to believe for. 2021, that there's going to be a change. Hallelujah. I hope you enjoyed this teaching tonight, this ministry. Hallelujah. It is a blessing to be a part of, amen, to see God going forth. Amen. Don't jump, don't bail ship. Stay on board. Serve God with all your heart. Amen. This is what the Bible studies are for, to to strengthen us, to encourage us, to uplift us and to hear the word of God. And I just, I pray that you've been blessed and maybe you need to rededicate your life and say the sinner's prayer and need some encouragement. I want you to repeat after me, say, Jesus, I come before you. Lord, I pray for forgiveness. God, give me the strength Give me the ability. I pray power over the enemy and over my flesh. God, help me in a time of need to not be discouraged, but to be strengthened. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that your kingdom come and that your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. I'll see you next week. I'll see you in church. I'll see you, amen, here, there, or in the air. God bless you. Be blessed. Amen. Aloha.